Hi, I'm Captain Chris Myers, Orlando Fly Casting Lessons. Today we're going to talk about what a tailing loop is and how you can fix it. Thanks for joining me today. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I got tons of fly casting videos. If you're having a problem with your cast, you may be able to find a solution in one of my playlists, so please check that out. Tailing loops are often incorrectly diagnosed, and I will admit that some of my older videos, I was one of those persons that were calling some closed loops tailing loops. And closed loops and tailing loops are not the same. We're going to show you the difference today and show you exactly what a tailing loop is. A tailing loop is caused when the tip of our rod travels below the straight line path. So if this is the tip of my rod, here's my straight line. As that rod goes back and forth, the rod bends, it goes down the straight line, it straightens out, it stays on the straight line. If we bend the rod too much, it goes down below the straight line, it straightens up, it pops above it, and it often recoils down and crosses it again. That can cause the tailing loop. So look at what the tip of the rod is doing in this video, especially in the slow motion. And then you can follow the fly leg of the cast, and it'll show you exactly what the tip was doing. Before we start with looking at the video, Let's take a snapshot drawing and look at the difference between a closed loop and a tailing loop. Now, open loop would be if the rod leg and the fly leg were not intersecting at all. This is a closed loop. It can happen if you don't have a high enough line speed, but it doesn't necessarily catch or cause a problem. And if you cast the rod tilted out to the side, uh, looking at it from the camera angle, a lot of the loops look like they're closed, even though they might not really be closed. But that is a closed loop. This is a tailing loop, and you see that there are two spots where the fly leg, or what should be the top part of the loop, cross, go across the rod leg. And that big dip we have underneath the rod leg coincides with where the rod tip dipped down below the straight line path. So the fly leg will always mimic what the tip of the rod does. And you can see what your rod tip was doing by looking at the shape of your fly leg in your cast. So first let's define what a tailing loop is and what it is not. Our normal open loops, which look something like this, have a rod leg, a fly leg, and either a rounded or pointed front end. But the two intersections, the rod leg and the fly leg, do not intersect. Next, we can have a closed loop. And from the angle the camera is, a lot of these will appear to be closed loops, even if they're not. But it looks like the fly leg and the rod leg are crossing at one point. When we get them to cross at two points, so when the fly leg of our line dips down below the rod leg, makes a little soup bowl, comes back up over it, that is a tailing loop. The tailing loop is caused by the tip of this rod traveling in a convex or an underhand a path. So a, a concave path of the tip would be when it is going over the straight line in a curve. Our straight line will give us a nice tight loop like this. And when we throw the tailing loop, it intersects, the rod tip dips down below the straight line, pops back up above the straight line, and it makes two crossing points. So let's take a look at the regular cast and a tailing loop in slow motion. First, we're going to look at a normal regular cast. See how the rod does not overbend. It bends just enough to flip the line off the tip. But it begins bending right away as soon as I change directions. There's a nice narrow loop. You can see that loop appeared to be closed, but it does not cause a problem. It's only crossing over once. There's a narrow loop traveling up in the back. There's one with a slight point directed down towards the target. So most of the time I'm casting slightly up in the back, slightly down in the front so that my fly lands 
or straightens out right above my target is not subject to the wind or just aerodynamics and so it doesn't randomly fall somewhere. See how that rod starts bending right away? It flips the loop over the top, that loop unrolls towards the target. There's a speed up and stop right there at the very end. You can see how the rod speeds up tremendously at the end of the stroke, allows that loop to develop off the tip. So here we're going to see the tailing loop. There's a normal back cast, a regular open loop. There's a normal forward cast unrolling out towards the target. Now, what you will see causes the difference is I make my back cast starting creeping forward. The rod's already moving forward as the line was still going back. Now most of the rod is in front of my head and I have to put a whole bunch of power on really quickly. There the line crosses twice, causing our tailing loop. So too short of a stroke with too much power often causes the tails. There's a normal back cast. And right here you see how the rod is already beginning to bend. In our good cast the rod is beginning to bend. There's my stop in the front. It comes over the top of that rod, unrolls towards the target. The rod is bending already. It stops, the loop forms as a slight drift backwards. That loop is unrolling above the tip, not headed down towards the ground. That loop is formed over the tip of the rod, unrolls towards the target. So you notice in every one of these strokes, this rod is beginning to bend the instant I change direction. So as soon as I come forward, because I'm pulling on a straight line, and I have a long stroke, it can bend all the way through the stroke. Here's my delivery stroke, the same spot that I was making all my false casts that I'm going to follow through. Let's take a look at the tailing loop. Here's an okay back cast. You see the rod starting to creep forward without too much bend and then there's a whole bunch of bend all at once and that tip bounces down in the front, pops back up causes that line to go across twice, forming the classic tailing loop. So now that we know how to identify what a tailing loop is we, and how it's caused, which is by the tip of the rod going below the straight line path and then popping up above it, we need to figure out how is this happening. I teach lots of fly casting and I do lots of fly fishing charters and more often than not, I see this occur when people are creeping forward as the line is still unrolling behind them and then because their stroke length is going to be so short in the front they have to put full power on in a very short amount of stroke which over bends the rod. Let's see if you could pick that up. So here is my normal cast. It's stop, 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 follow through a stop and freeze or a slight drift backwards in the back, it's never creeping forward. But if I start to creep forward as the line's still traveling backward and now I'm starting my forward cast from here, I have such a little zone left to go so I can only go from here to here and maintain some kind of loop. If I come from here to here, I'm going to completely lose the loop which often happens The people that don't get tailing loops and creep forward often have this cast when they just slam it down and there is no loop going forward at all. But if you're getting the tailing loop, it may be because you creep forward and then you have to make a very hard cast in a very short stroke, which is over bending the rod. So we can make tailing loops in the front. We can make them in the back. We can make them on both sides every single stroke. Normally I don't find that to be the case and I think most people find that they are okay until they're going to deliver the fly 
and then the tail and the tangle up occurs. So it may look something like this. Make false cast, false cast, and now I think I'll put it a little bit farther out and you end up with a big old tangled mess that when the fly sticks on the fly line, it wraps around the leader. I got all these knots in my leader because we're gonna add a little bit extra juice and we crept forward and had a shorter stroke with more power than we had been using, which brought us below that straight line. Let's talk about some remedies for fixing this tailing loop. Number one is when I'm practicing, if I get in the habit of looking back there and watching my rod stop back here, I will start to eliminate the temptation to creep forward. I find that most people that creep forward a lot have back casts that look something like this. And the reason they're creeping forward is to keep that back cast, the hook or the line from hitting the water or the ground, whatever behind them. And so they immediately start coming forward and that's how they get the tailing loop because their forward stroke is so short. So solution number one is let's get our back cast up here, take that line, flip it up over the top, get that thing away from there. Now I can sit back here and freeze. Here's where I'm starting my forward stroke from. So I get to go all the way out to here. If I cheat forward, now I'm starting my forward stroke from here and I use the same amount of power, I didn't come close to getting that line straightened out. So let's look at two examples of what this creeping forward does to our cast. I'll lay this line out straight behind me. I'm gonna start with my tip way back here. One stroke, straighten the whole thing out. Lay the same amount of line. I'm gonna try to use the same amount of power, except now I'm gonna start my reel and the butt of the rod are already in front of my body. I'm gonna start my tip about halfway back as far, use the same amount of force, didn't get there. So what would I have to do if my stroke is shorter? If your stroke is shorter than mine and you're gonna get the same amount of line out, you're going to have to add a whole bunch of power really fast, which is usually going to end up in some kind of tailing loop and or tangle. Looking behind us, sticking that tip back there, stick the tip, it will eliminate the temptation to creep. Then I don't have to slam the gas on all in one little short stroke. Another thing we need to check on is our grip. If we're casting very, very hard at the very, at the end, most people doing that have a tight grip on this rod, otherwise the rod's going to fly out of their hand. It is certainly possible to make a tailing loop with a gentle, dainty grip, but again, most people I fish with and work with in lessons have a death grip on the rod because they're throwing it so hard, the rod would fly out of their hand if they didn't squeeze it hard. Once we do that, it's very difficult to be fluid, have a nice fluid acceleration with a little fling at the very end instead of one hard force all the way through. To have a nice gentle grip, barely holding on, I can do it with two and a half fingers, flip over the top, flip over the top, and we should be able to let that thing balance on one finger when we're letting it go. Flip over the top, flip, balance on one finger. If I'm doing my tailing loop, flip over the top, cheat. I, I couldn't let that go. That would come flying out of my hand for sure. So if it feels like the rod would fly out of your hand on your delivery, if you had a really gentle, gentle grip, you're probably casting too hard and your grip is hard as a result, tightening up your entire arm and shoulder. We could do tailing loops on the front, we can do them on the back. We can do them on the front and the back on the same cast. So we could do something like that. Rarely do I see that occur. More times than not, the issue is on the delivery. And the delivery is much harder than all the strokes before that in an attempt to get a few extra feet with maybe not so good or so well shaped of a loop going forward. So here you see a typical issue when throwing a lot of tailing loops is the fly and the leader get wrapped around the end of the fly line and you're constantly having to pick this apart end up with a whole bunch of knots in your leader that you have to cut out and fix. This one probably has 10 knots in it from demonstrating these tailing loops. So we talked about sticking your back cast 
back there, do not creep forward. That will help you eliminate the temptation to put a whole bunch of power into the cast over a short stroke. We also want to look at what is the entire length of my stroke for the amount of line I'm trying to cast. For a little bitty short piece of line, for this amount of line, I barely need to move my rod at all. It's a very short cast, I can do it with my wrist. If I add on another 20, 30 feet of line on here, or even another 15 feet, now my stroke goes from back here to out here. Look how much longer it is, it's almost twice as long, but if I'm stopping my back cast right here, and I make my forward cast stop in the same place, my back cast was only half as far, I'm gonna have to add extra power, extra power, over bend the rod, can end in a tailing loop. If you're gonna be in the Orlando area, you can come and see me for a one-on-one -on -one personal fly casting lesson. I also offer analysis of your cast on video with a written and a narrated video sent back to you diagnosing any issues I've seen. Subscribe to my channel and check out my playlist right here on the top fly casting problems I encounter.